on in. Yeah, I'm not too early, am I? No, no, just finishing up. Then they're all yours. Yeah. You're welcome to them. Ah. <laughs> Guys, please come sit down. Quickly, please. We have Constable Parrish here. She's going to give you a talk on personal safety. Before you get too excited, I'm going to come around and pick up your assignments, which, of course, you all have ready for me. Just pass them to the end of the row, thanks. Emily, looking good, as usual. Thank you. Thanks, Jason. So yours? Yeah. Very impressive. Excel yourself. Rufus. Where's your assignment, Rufus? Have you done it? Rufus, answer me when I talk to you, please. Would you show me, please? Ow! Are you okay? Uh, are you okay? Joe, uh, it's all right. Uh, okay, it's all right. It's okay. Um, just, just sit up there. Where's it hurt? Just, just back off, all right? There's nothing Can to see. Can you try and move your fingers for me? Yeah. Oh, it's, it might be a sprain or something. What happened? Mrs. Gomez pushed him. What? No, no, I didn't. Yes, yeah, she did. I saw it too. Thank you for waiting, Constable. The school nurse has taken the boy to hospital and we've contacted his family. Where's Denise? She's waiting outside. I wanted to question these two witnesses in your presence, if you don't mind. But it might This be is a very question. serious allegation against a member of the teaching staff and I want to get to the bottom of it. Jason McHenry. Yes, Miss Ellis. Tell us what you saw. Miss Gomez was going spaz at Rufus over his assignment and he was ignoring it, so she pushed him. She deliberately pushed him out of his seat. That's what it looked like to me. Are you sure? Well, Emma saw it too. Emily. That's right. Emily Larson. What did you see? She definitely grabbed his arm and pushed. Do you have any idea why Mrs. Gourmet should do such a thing? She picks on him all the time. Why? He's a bit of a loser. I think it's because he's Jewish. And she's... I see. All right. You two can go. Straight back to class and no dawdling, thank you. I won't have this sort of thing in my school, Constable. I'd like her to be treated as a police matter. But surely you want to get to well, You've heard side. the evidence. I imagine I can leave it with you. Uh, come on, take a seat. Look, I never even touched him. He just fell off his chair. You might have thought you were going to hit him. I know, what that kid thinks. He's a weird unit. Sounds like you don't like him very much. No, it, look, he just irritates me. He's this wimpy, passive, cringing kid. You know, he's... Bright enough if he just woke up to himself. Could this irritation have caused you to threaten him? I didn't threaten him. I didn't even touch him. Look, look. okay, look. I snatched through his paper mm. and I hadn't even gotten there and he just fell off his chair. Then why did he fall? I don't know. It, it looked like he threw himself off. Deliberately. Denise, are you aware that Rufus Sedgwick is Jewish? Is he? Might that have affected your attitude towards him? Whoa. Oh, no, hang on. I've grown up as a wog in a skips world, OK? I am the last person to discriminate against anyone for their religion. So what do you think happened? I don't know. He... I reached for his paper, mm -hmm. he threw himself off his chair and hurt his wrist. That's it. Hi, Rufus. You waiting for your parents, mate? For now, no. She's in with the doctor. Uh, how are you feeling? I broke my wrist. When your nana gets back, we'd like to ask you some questions about she is. today. Uh, Mrs. Sedgwick? Oh, hi, Mrs. Goldman, actually. I'm his maternal grandmother. You're his legal guardian, are you? Rufus is having a little holiday with me while his mother settles into a new marriage. Oh, how long has he been with you? Oh, uh, two years. Goldman, is that a Jewish name? I think it might have been somewhere way back in my husband's family. So, Rufus isn't Jewish. Whatever gave you that idea? We'd like to ask Rufus some questions about what happened today. Yeah. So, mate, just tell us how it happened. I broke my wrist. Yeah, but how? I fell on the floor. It, it must have twisted under me. It's really so no Oh, easy, easy. But how did you end up on the floor? I don't know. I want to go home. Of course you do. Couldn't we do this later, Sergeant? We'd really like to clear it up now, if we could. I see. Well, there's something you should know. The doctor said she found bruises all up 
and down his forearm. Someone has given him very vicious Chinese burns. Were you aware Rufus Sedgwick has been the victim of bullying? Not specifically, but of course bullying is endemic in the school Isn't system. Is it possible he's broken wrist as a result of that bullying? It seems unlikely. Anyway, we have two witnesses, Jason and Emily, who saw Mrs Gormez assault mm. the boy. What if the bully happened to be Jason? You need some motive for him to lie. I can't see Jason as a bully. He's a very gifted student. And besides, the Larson girl saw it too. What if she lied to support Jason? I doubt it. Those two are more academic rivals than friends. Denise denies assaulting the boy. Well, she would, wouldn't she? Have you actually got her side of the story yet? Yes, yes, I'm seeing her later. Do you honestly believe that a member of your staff would be capable of such an action? She's very young. And while I have every sympathy for members of minority groups, it's not easy for them. In what way? Oh, you know, fitting into our society. I mean, I'm all for religious tolerance, and in principle, of course, How I support How does her being her... Muslim have anything to do with assaulting children? I'm not saying it does. Look, I think we're missing the point here, which is that two of my most trusted students saw Denise Gomez assault that boy. How does a racist bigot like that get to be principal of a high school? I mean, it's, it's a disgrace. How about you write a letter to the editor, and in the meantime, let your sergeant tell me what happened? I'm just Basically, saying that... doesn't matter. Basically, it's Denise's word against these two kids, and apparently the two kids have got no reason to lie. So, it's not looking too good for Denise. Except we know Rufus was bullied earlier. I mean, no-one's suggesting Denise gave him a Chinese burn. Nobody else witnessed the incident? No. What about you? You were there. I was facing the whiteboard. So, uh, what do you want to do? I wouldn't be authorising any charges against her at this stage. All right. Keep your eyes and ears open, Parrish. Yeah, I always do, boss. <laughs> It wouldn't hurt to ask a few discreet questions, see whether Denise has a propensity for violence. Well, that is a complete waste of Do time. Do you have to argue about everything? Uh, sorry. Uh, is this a bad time? No. Uh, how can I help you, sir? I think somebody's stolen my goat. Your goat? Yes. Yeah, she's, she's a sort of uh, family pet. Name? Uh, Jemima. No, yours. Oh, yeah, sorry. Um, David Larson, with an O. Uh, excuse me, sir. Uh, you don't happen to have a daughter named Emily? Emily? Yeah. Yes. Um, yes, I, I do indeed. Uh, Emily's my, uh, youngest. She's in year eight at Mount Thomas High. Uh, nine. Hmm? Sorry? Uh, she's actually in year nine. I met her today. Yeah, probably, yeah. Probably. My wife usually keeps track of that, but she's, um, she's away at the moment in a uh, field study in New Guinea. She's uh, studying the breeding cycle of a very rare species. Uh, yeah. Sorry, my goat. <sighs> Jemima. Uh, I, um, I went to talk to her this morning and uh, she'd gone. You went to talk to your goat? Yes, I'm, uh, I'm writing a, an academic tome for my sins and uh, it's become a bit of a ritual. So she was... There yesterday, gone today. Precisely. Any idea who might have taken it? None whatsoever. No. I don't suppose you've seen any strangers hanging around? Oh, it's also easy to blame the others, the unknown, the uh, swarthy strangers in our midst, but is that fair? I don't think so. When was this? Uh, yesterday. Uh, Ladish, probably. Can you believe that guy? I mean, does he want us to find his goat or what? Yeah, He's made a complaint, so thing. we better follow it up. So we're supposed to chase oh, around okay. after these two Middle Eastern guys he reckons can't possibly be responsible. That's why he joined the force, yeah, isn't it, Joe? No, not really. No, go on, up you go. Uh, stop by the school on the way. Verity Ellis wants to see you. Oh, wicked. I have a security issue. A couple of strange men have been seen lurking around the school. Strange in what way? Of Middle Eastern appearance. Oh, they didn't have a goat with them, did they? How long ago were they seen? Maybe half an hour, 40 minutes. The phys ed teacher went to see what they wanted and they ran off. Right, so what exactly were they doing? I just told you, they were lurking on school premises. My concern arises from my suspicion that they may be related to Denise Gomez. So? I was forced to suspend Mrs. Gomez from her duties after the incident this morning. You suspended her? And she made certain threats that I am now taking seriously. Right. So you think she may have sent some male relatives to exact revenge somehow? 
That is my concern. How could you suspend her? Okay, we'll look into the matter. Look, I thought you wanted us no, to I, deal with this issue. I don't think we'll take up any more of your time. We'll let you know. Constable. she suspend you? We haven't even finished investigating it. Because she's a stupid cow and she hates my guts? Well, I think it might be correct procedure. Yeah, well, that Denise, sucks. Denise. I mean, suspending Denise is as good as saying she's guilty. What's all this? You're home because you're suspended? Uh, Mum, I didn't want to worry you, okay? It'll blow over. What do you do? I didn't do anything. That's yeah, the point. You must have done something. She's being accused of assaulting a student, but it's... Assaulting? Pretty... Denise, did you threaten Mrs Ellis when she suspended you? Uh, no. Well... You know, usual things. Such as? You know, that she hadn't heard the last of this and stuff. Understandable under the circumstances. Yeah. Right. Well, do you have any male relatives who may have decided to go down to the school on your behalf? Sorry, we're all out of male relatives. None at all? No, nah, Dad died last year. And um, Uncle Sam's still up at St David's Prison doing time. And uh, my husband Mehmet's over in Turkey. He's looking after his sick father. Yeah, he's just Denny's and me. Mm. So have either of you seen any strangers about town last week? Like, of Middle Eastern appearance? No, they're not coming here. And we sell only Middle Eastern food in Mount Thomas. Denise? No, I haven't seen any strangers of any appearance. If the Demirs didn't send them, and, and why would they, what were they doing at the school? Well, finding a good home for the goat. They had a goat with them. Well, well, probably not. Do you think there are goat thieves? What goat thieves? They match the description of two men David Larson saw yesterday. His goat. Yeah. Oh, fine. Well, what are you waiting for? Get out there and check it out. Oh, this is Jemima's paddock. So, basically, anyone could have come in and led her away. Well, as I said. All right, so this shortcut the strangers were on, where is it? Ah, uh, it's just down there. It's a sort of path, runs past the next-door property. And uh, who lives there? Nobody. That's deserted. Ever since the bank foreclosed. Well, so you live next door to a deserted farmhouse? Yeah, that's right. They were lovely people. Should never have happened to them. Have you checked there for your go to Mr. Larson? Hmm? No, 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 I haven't. But it's, uh, it's a possibility. Yeah. Although she's never, uh, she's never gone down there before. Oh, well, why don't I we check it out for you, Mr. Larson? Right, I'll thank you. Yeah. Well, I could have left the gate open. Hello? Anybody here? Hello? Jonesy? Oh! Oh! Look like a goat to you. Poor Jemima. Roasts enough to turn your veg on. There's a bit of a campsite in one of the front rooms, but no ID. Well, they got it with them. What a doofus David Larson is. His goat was here the whole time. Yeah, so much for not suspecting the strangers in our midst. Yeah, let's get out of here, honey. Fresh air. That's better. That place gives me the creeps. We have to go back in to take in the evidence, yeah. though. Silly me, you forgot to bring my extra large evidence bags. Yeah, well, we can't just leave it in there, yeah, Joe. Well, why not? Use it as bait for a trap? Why don't just wait for them to return? Have you got a better idea? They're going to have to come back for their goat feast at some point. All right, I'm going to forward drive. I'll let the Sarge know what we're doing. The bomb must have been in one of the front rooms. And you didn't see anything? You meant apart from the big black thing with the burning wick coming out of it? Are you two all right? Well, we could have still been inside. Yes, but thankfully, you weren't. Yeah, but the question is, boss, why would you bother blowing up a lonely farmhouse? You don't like coppers? No, they would have done it while we were still inside. Perhaps it was just some sort of protective booby trap. Yeah, well, there was no sign of illegal activity. Except for Jemima. The butchered goat. But a bomb seems a bit extreme to protect a bit of goat duffing, Joe. And these mysterious strangers were squatting in the house, weren't they? Well, it looked like it. And what's more, they could be Middle Eastern. Now, the arson squad found the remnants of a boarding pass from one of the Arabian Airlines. 
I don't suppose these remnants had any names on them? No such luck. The Soggies are following it up. Right. I also found the remains of a simple timing device, sort of thing you might find in a homemade bomb. But why would these Arab squatters blow up the place they were living in? Well, maybe it was a trial run and these two happened to be there at the wrong time. Yeah, and leave at the right time. A trial run? For what? Who knows? Oi! Is it true they're Arab terrorists targeting mountains? Who have you been talking to? Where would you get an idea like that? One, Arab strangers stole the Larson's goat. Two, they've been seen lurking around the school. Three, they've been holing up in the Prendergast place. Four, a bomb went off there this afternoon, nearly killing Joel and Jonesy. You Eve. are wasted behind a bar, you know. Any chance it'll be... And number five, your special operations people have been swirling their cloaks and flashing their daggers all over town. Yeah, that's an exaggeration, Chris. They don't have daggers. Two Thank years, you, please. Stu. I was next. Anyway, what's the story? Because I have to tell you, rumours are flying. You surprise me. Keith Purvis reckons he's found evidence of a terrorist training camp in the National Park. Keith? So that's who you've been talking to? Well, he would. And Merv reckons he knows for a fact that a major international terrorist organisation is setting up their headquarters and in Mount Thomas. And Merv, too. Why on earth would they choose Mount Thomas? That's Merv's theory, not mine. I just want to know what the hell the cops are doing about it. Well, as usual, you can rest assured that everything is under control. <laughs> Yeah, what he said. Any chance of a beer? Arab terrorists. I mean, they've got to be kidding, haven't they, in Mount Thomas? Yeah, it seems a bit unlikely. But it's just ignorant, redneck bigotry. I mean, it totally fails to take into account the economic and political pressures that create terrorism. So you don't know what you're talking place. about? Anyone for darts? What do I say? I can't really believe we're being targeted by Arab terrorists. Don't kid yourself, mate. We're sticking our head in the sand if we think it couldn't happen here. But in Mount Thomas? I mean, why would they choose here? We haven't done anything to them. Because it's indiscriminate, Joe. That's how my old man ended up dead. What? Huh? He was in Beirut. They didn't care who he was or what he was doing, but he ended up shot just the same. Oh, sorry, I didn't know about that. I'm the days. I'm the last person to have a go at anyone's religion. But I will not sympathise with terrorists. Well, I didn't say sympathise. I just think we should try and understand the root causes, like globalisation of trade. I don't causing want to understand. They use terror and violence against innocent people. It's unforgivable. I know, but surely dealing with the causes leads to a long-term solution. I don't know what you're talking about. Don't walk away from me. I'm just no, haven't you got some work to do? I'm talking to PJ. I don't think he wants to listen. Don't touch anything. We'll be right there. Sarge, we've hmm? got trouble at the mirrors. We we're just having our brisky at the back and we heard it go. Well, did you see anyone? No, I just had the traditional brick. Mm. Go home, clotheads. Yeah, I think they mean clotheads. I've been trying to get her to stop wearing it, but she is so stubborn. Mum, why should I give in to bigotry? Just until this trouble is over. Everyone knows we're Muslim by now. Do you have any idea who could have done this? It could have been anyone. And Denise has been abused in the street. Oh, well, when was this? It's just some yobs in a passing car. A news agent? No, no, he's different. He's, he's always been bad-tempered. I'm worried for her safety. Look, what if they come back? Mrs Demir, these people are usually cowards. But if it'll make you feel safer, I'll stay for a while. OK, thank you. And uh, in the meantime, you've got anything we could put over this until the glazier arrives? It might be something like that. Hey, Joe. You're still on suspension, right? Yeah, don't remind me. Have you spoken to your union? I reckon you might have a good case for discrimination. You're a bit of a stir, aren't you? The first sighting was Tuesday Arvo, though taking a shortcut through Larson's. And presumably stealing the goat. Well, any idea when they arrived in town? Well, there's no record of them arriving either by bus or by train. Well, according to the boarding pass, they've been in the country three weeks. So they must have arrived by some other means, hitchhiking, rental car? Except nobody's seen them in a vehicle. And why would you live rough if you had the money to hire a car? Obviously not being financed by Al-Qaeda. In fact, they're looking less and less like international terrorists. Because of the fact that an explosive device blew up on the premises. Yeah, explain that away. Where's he? I've been doing your job for you. You want to hear? First sighting of the Arabs was on Monday at the highway truck stop. Dorian saw them getting out of a vegetable truck. What time? Uh, afternoon. On Tuesday, they tried to buy bread from Dot Harbright at the bakery, but they didn't have enough money. For bread? No, so she gave them half a loaf. Then they were seen outside the Brown Hour, and they're giving Jasmine the creeps because they're just standing there watching people eat their coffee and cake. You know those new tables she's got oh, on the oh, path oh, there? still on Tuesday, Chris. Keep up, PJ. Then they nearly bowled over Winifred Starling and her shopping trolley outside the kebab house. Oh, hang on, did, did they go in the kebab house? You said you hadn't seen them. Don't remember. 
Come on, Mrs. Demir. They were soon coming in here on Tuesday. Maybe they come in. Hmm? Why didn't you say so? I don't want any more trouble for Dennis. Well, why would reporting these strangers bring trouble for your daughter? Please, I don't want Dennis to know. Don't want Dennis to know what? Nothing. Ma, what's going on? What do you want me to know? You may as well tell us. All right. These two young men come in. I never seen them before. But they ask see Osman. Your husband? When I told them he died, one of them almost fell over. I offered coffee, but they left. What the with Dad? You should go, Dennis. You will be late at school. Um, are you going back to work? Yeah, you arrive at the union. Just one call and the Ellis cow is unsuspending me, pending further inquiries. Beautiful. Yes, but she might change her mind if you're late. Then go now, please. Hi, Mum. See you guys. See ya. Sorry. Uh, you would like coffee, yes? No, thanks very much, Mrs. Demir. Uh, what language were these two young men speaking? Well, Turkish, of course. The security intelligence group traced the uh, boarding pass remnants to two Turkish nationals, um, Nazim and Ismail Hassan. Oh, brothers? Presumably. They, uh, they bought return economy airfares from Istanbul to Sydney via Dubai. Why did they come to town? But why the Demirs? Uh, Mrs. Demir had no theories? No, not a one. Oh, uh, you might be interested in the rest of this SRG report. Uh, apparently, the main ingredient of the bomb was potassium nitrate. Gunpowder? Mm. Mm -hmm. Now, where would you get hold of that? Well, it's commonly found in school science labs. What is this, Joe? It's OK. The chemicals are kept in this cupboard. Denise, do you have potassium nitrate? Yeah, of course. Every school does. May we see it? Sure. Where is it? I just... Yeah. It's, um... It must have been uh, put back somewhere else. I don't... I don't know. Perhaps you gave it to your relatives to make bombs. Hey, look, they're, they're not my relatives, all right? I've you never seen them. You could, of course, have made the bomb yourself. Mrs Ellis. Oh, come on. Just because I teach science doesn't mean I know how to make a bomb. But you do know how to use the internet. I understand there are several sites that teach bomb making. Why don't you check that out for a start? This is ridiculous. Do we have your permission, please? No, 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 you don't. You Can't don't require her permission? permission. That's a school computer. I give you my permission to search it and anywhere else in the school that you like. Last Friday, nothing either. Thursday, NASA ski report. BritneySpears.com. How about Wednesday? Yep, yep, we're getting there, we're getting there. Look, you're, you're really not going to find anything. Here we are. At least three different bomb making sites. I don't, I don't believe it. You want to look them up to confirm? Am my guest. Oh, this, is, this isn't happening. No, I have never made a bomb. What about internet sites? I didn't look them up. They're on your computer. <laughs> it's not my computer. It belongs to the school. It's totally available for student use. Which explains the BritneySpears.com. Exactly. Clearly, I'm not always there to supervise. So basically, anyone could have accessed it? Anyone in my class, yeah. So to your knowledge, who was the last student to use the internet? Uh, I don't know. Um, probably Jason. Jason McKendry. And when was this? Uh, last week. Might he also have accessed bomb-making sites? Oh, gee, if he did, it'd probably be just academic curiosity. He's got no reason to make a bomb. Yeah, it's good to know. I wanted to check out the latest research data from NASA on CO2 deprivation. Right, uh, do you know anything about making bombs, Jason? Of course, in theory. But it's not my thing. I'm not a geek loser. But you think making a bomb is the sort of thing a geek loser might do? Yeah, why not? Got any particular loser in mind? <laughs> no, sorry, can't help you. Uh, sorry to interrupt, but we found a missing container. I've got no idea how it got in my desk. You didn't put it there? 
Oh, get it real. If I took it, why would I want to incriminate myself? Does anyone else have access to your desk? Anyone does. It, my desk's not locked, neither is a staff room. Theoretically, anyone could have put it there. How much potassium nitrate was in the container the last time you used oh, it? It was almost full. Right, and how many explosive devices could be made with what's missing? <laughs> how long's a piece of string? Um... More than one, probably. Denise, have you got any ideas on which your students might have an interest in making bombs? No. Is there anyone you might describe as a geek loser? Well, yeah, there's a few of them. <laughs> you met a couple yesterday, one in particular. Rufus Century. Mm. Well, do you have any evidence to suggest that Rufus is interested in making bombs? Well, he did blow up a waste paper bin once after class. Look, he's such a wimpy kid, I can't imagine him blowing up a farmhouse. All right, bye. PJ, SOG said that the bomb at the farmhouse would have only taken half of what was in that container. Ben, would you mind sitting with Denise? Sure thing. So we're still holding it? Yeah, I'm holding her until I'm satisfied. Meanwhile, I'm going to talk to the kid. You coming? Is this really necessary? Surely you've found your culprit. Mrs. Ellis, we won't keep Rufus long. Just a moment. I well, see she's got an open mind. Well, we can't all be perfect. Unless you're Jason McKendry. Not only good looking and an academic high achiever, but a muser as well. It's not a crime to be talented, Joe. I don't want to. Don't be silly, Rufus. You're not being arrested. You're simply assisting the police with their inquiries. Do I have to? We'd be grateful if you did, Rufus. It's no big deal. What do you think you're doing? Huh? What is this? Sound pollution? No one asked you anyway. Sorry for living! Just tell us the truth, Rufus. There's no need to be frightened. Rufus, have you ever made a bomb? No. Right, what about that time you blew up the waste paper bin? That was an accident. You must have used explosives. Yeah, chemical stuff from the lab. What, potassium nitrate? Probably. What about the internet, Rufus? You ever use the internet? Yeah. You ever look up bomb-making sites? No. You sure? Can I say something? Mm-hmm. It's about what happened yesterday. What? Mrs. Gomez did push me off my chair, and that's how I broke my wrist. Thanks, Rufus. We'll take note of that. He's got to be lying. But it seemed Tom. very cool all of a sudden. Hey, Chris. Oh, I think we've got a problem. What is it? The Phelan boys saw smoke this morning down by the old mill. Everyone's convinced it's the terrorists and they're forming oh. a vigilante group to hunt them down. What next? All right, come on, you heard yep. Let's go. Thanks. Oh, that's all right. I want this sorted out too, but not like that. All right, flak jackets. We'll yeah. take two vehicles. Yeah, I'll notify D24. Yeah, uh, what about uh, Rufus? Uh, send him home. We can always pick him up later. And be careful. I don't want anybody hurt. Yeah. Look, this really sucks, you know? I'm being treated like some kind of criminal and I haven't even done anything wrong. I'm sorry, Denise. It shouldn't be too much longer. Would you like another cuppa? No, I don't want a cuppa. It's not fair. I, I've got a different religion. Fine. But I, I'm being blamed for everything. I wouldn't say that, Mr. Come on, sit down, mate. You try being an Australian Muslim, hmm? Never since September... I felt homeless. You don't think I'm a mad bomber, do you? From what I know of you, Denise, I'd find it very hard to believe. So what am I doing here? Well, unfortunately, there does still seem to be some link between you and these young Turks, and the bomb blast needs to be explained. Hey, what are you doing? Get up! Get up! Sit down! Come on, here! And talk those Quiet! I take it these are our two missing Turks? Yeah, we found them in a storage tank out by the old windmill. Asleep as it happens. And the vigilantes? We'll be disappointed. So, what do you know about the bomb blast? You know, bomb? Bam! No, no, PJ, you're not helping. They clearly don't speak English. Do you guys want to know what they're actually saying? Yeah? He's, um, innocent and doesn't want you to hit him. He's really hungry. Hungry? Oh, you poor thing. Hang on. Oh, good, just a Siz Türkçe konuşuyor musunuz? Bize ne olacak? Korkma, sana zarar vermezler. You want me to translate? 
I don't think that would be appropriate under the circumstances, but you might care to explain to them that we'll be taking them to an interpreter at St David's. What about their food? Uh, can you ask them if they want tea or coffee? Just as soon as they've had something to eat. Here we go. Right again. Boss, PJ and Joe are back from St David's. Mm-hmm. Well, well, we were right. The Turks are brothers. Yeah, and one of them works as a hospital orderly in Bursa, which is where uh, Denise's husband, Mehmet, he's currently visiting his dying father. Anyway, while he was working, he overheard Mehmet talking about his Australian wife, Denise Demir, which just happens to be the surname of the father who ran off to Australia and abandoned them all. Oh, okay, ago. to cut a very long story short, they came to Australia to find their long lost father. And because they thought they'd get automatic Australian citizenship, poor things. They were devastated when they found out Osman was dead. I find it very hard to credit that Osman Demir would have a secret family in Turkey. I don't think he did. Now, remember his older brother Sam? Sam, the immigration scammer, yeah. Well, that'd be rather more likely. Well, the good news is their dad's alive. The bad news is he's in prison. What about the bomb blast? They don't know anything about it. So where does that leave us? Well, Denise is obviously off the hook for a start. Maybe. You can go now. Ah, oh, finally. I told you I had nothing to do with those Turks. Well, they're probably your cousins, actually. And uh, they've got nowhere to stay, no money, and they don't speak English. Right. Where are they? St David's. <laughs> sure they're not mad bombers? Unlikely. Well, if they're not, and now I'm not, who is? Rufus. He says not. Mm. You watch him. Pretty convincing liar when he wants to be. Rufus Sedgwick? He's just a child. An adolescent, a mass of turbulent emotions. Well, including a raging desire to kill for a grudge. He hasn't killed anyone yet, boss. Not yet, but if PJ's right about the second bomb... He... No, Rufus, but look what we found. All the ingredients for a homemade bomb. Mm. His grandma let us search. So where's Rufus? He's at the school dance. Blimey. Oh, when did it start? Half an hour ago. Oh. We'll get going. Yeah. No running people. Straight across to the gym. This is a routine evacuation. Just take it easy. Yeah, it's all right. There he is. Rufus. Hey. Hey. Rufus. Hey. Go. Oh, got you. Go. <laughs> You know what this stuff is, Rufus? Speak up for the tape. No. We found it in your back shed. You used it to make bombs, didn't you? How many did you make, Rufus? Did you make more than one? Answer me. We really need to know about the bombs, mate. It's important. I just want to go home. Well, you can't until you tell us about the second bomb. Where did you put it? I just want to go home. You frightened him. He's supposed to be 14. How do I know he's going to react like an eight-year-old? The dog squad is searching the assembly hall. Now, we don't want anything triggering the device, if there is one. So all radios and mobiles are turned off. So unfortunately, we can't make contact. He knows where the bomb is. I know he does. Why don't I try talking to him in your office? That's going to work. He obviously doesn't respond to your brand of male bullying. He's playing around with bombs, Joe. I'm supposed to treat him with kid gloves? I think even PJ would agree that anything is worth a try at this stage. So I understand, mate. Understand how hard it is when everyone's picking on you. And even the guys with the most won't give you even a little bit. I'm the powerless underclass. Well, you, yeah, I guess you are. Oppressed by the entrenched establishment because they're actually terrified of free competition. That's... One way of looking at it, yeah. Not satisfied with having most of the world's resources, they want to exploit and oppress the powerless to steal what little they have. But we're not going to let them get away with it. They have to learn that even the powerless couldn't fight back. And unfortunately, violence is the only language they understand. This is getting really believe all that stuff. That's what you make and plant a bomb. How in God's name would you ever get through to them? Oh, Did you hear all yeah, that? Yeah, 
He's quoting. I mean, he's got to be. You know, someone's fed it to him. Who? Well, I don't know. Someone bright, strong-willed and with an axe to grind, I guess. Jason McKendry? Except Jason despises him and he's probably bullying him. In fact, Jason pretty much represents the entrenched establishment he was talking about. Joe, they're schoolboys. Yes. Uh, who, who else? Um, there's Emily Larson. She was the other kid who reckoned Denise Hitler. Just remember? But she's got no extra grind, surely. She comes from a good family. She does well at school. But she does live next door to where the bomb went off. And she came out of the hall just now with Rufus. I got the wrong kid. I could test the bigger up. Oh. Uh, no radio contact, remember? idea. There's a PA around here somewhere. No, better still, why don't I get the special operations guys to release Jason's guitar from the hall? Would they do that? Yeah, if I ask nicely enough. So, who do you reckon the entrenched establishment at Mount Thomas High are, Rufus? There's heaps of them. Okay, what, what about uh, Jason McKendry? He's in the list. Reckon he'd be on top of it since he gave you that Chinese burn. How did you know? He threw your assignment in the mud, pushed you over and broke your wrist. He's a total bastard. Rufus. He deserves everything that's coming to him. Yeah? And what's that? Hmm? Awesome. Sorry we couldn't get the drums and everything, but uh, how about a solo? Sure. Yeah? What's going on? Just make sure no one leaves. All right, while we're waiting, we're going to have some music. Now, it's not a very big speaker, so gather round. Jason's going to play us a cheer. You heard the sergeant. Gather round, people. Now. I was sent to the site of a bomb blast once. Uh, still have nightmares about it, actually. Uh, this guy... Um, Wanted to get back at his ex-wife for uh, taking his kids, so he uh, set up a car bomb only. It went off at the wrong time while his wife was picking up the kids. What happened? Well, uh, two of his kids were very badly burned, uh, scarred for life. And um, his third kid, well, she died. Those poor children. Have you thought about what will happen when your bomb goes off, Rufus? Rufus, for God's sake, you've got to tell them. It wasn't my fault, she made me do it. Who? Passengers are restless. The captain's overboard. Situation critical, there are no rules. Drift on the ocean in a ship of fools. Hey, stay cool. Just keep an eye on Emily. Situation critical, there are no rules. A drift on the ocean in a ship of fools. That was awesome, mate. Eh? You got another one? Sure. Hey, I don't think so. Let me go, let me go. Why would we do that? Don't understand. It's going to blow up. Sorry? The apple glade's got a bomb in it. Sergeant, do you mind checking the amplifier to see if there's a bomb in there, please? Nope. There's no bomb here. Uh, you, you must mean the bomb that the Special Operations Group found and removed earlier. I don't 
don't understand. Like, why would you do such a thing? <sighs> They'd be right. Totally clueless, as usual. No, darling, that's not fair. Well, maybe now you take some notice. It's a hell of a way to get your dad's attention. I was fighting for the powerless underclass who are oppressed by, by the... the entrenched establishment. Yeah, I've heard all this before from Rufus. It made his life a misery. And what did you do to Denise? She was mean to him too. Oh, so you decided to make a bomb and frame her for it, did you? Now, darling, I agree with your ideals, but people could have been killed. Oh, we tested it. It wouldn't have been a huge explosion. Just enough to maim and disfigure Jason McHenry. That's what all this is about, isn't it? This has got nothing to do with helping Rufus. Jason bullied him. Yeah, and Jason was wrong to do that. But he could have just told Mrs Ellis, let her deal with it. He deserved to suffer. You know what you've done, mate? You've allowed yourself to become a pawn in someone else's game. You think Emily did all this to help you? No. She used you in a personal vendetta against Jason. But you just swapped one oppressor for another. Jason for Emily. I'm not too early, am I? No, no, just finishing up. Then they're all yours. Yeah. You're welcome to them. Ah. <laughs> Guys, please come sit down. Quickly, please. We have Constable Parrish here. She's going to give you a talk on personal safety. Oh, Before you get too excited, I'm going to come around and pick up your assignments, which, of course, you all have ready for me. Just pass them to the end of the row, thanks. Emily, looking good, as usual. Thank you. Thanks, Jason. So yours? Yeah. Very impressive. Excel yourself. Rufus. Where's your assignment, Rufus? Have you done it? Rufus, answer me when I talk to you, please. Would you show me, please? Ow! Oh. Are you okay? Uh, are you okay? Joe, uh, it's all right. Okay, it's all right. It's okay. Um, just, just sit up there. Where's it hurt? Just, just back off, all right? There's nothing Can to see. Can you try and move your fingers for me? Yeah. Oh, it's, it might be a sprain or something. What happened? Mrs. Gomez pushed him. What? No, no, I didn't. <laughs> yes, she did. I saw it too. Thank you for waiting, Constable. The school nurse has taken the boy to hospital and we've contacted his family. Where's Denise? She's waiting outside. I wanted to question these two witnesses in your presence, if you don't mind. But it might This be is a very question. serious allegation against a member of the teaching staff, and I want to get to the bottom of it. Jason McHendry. Yes, Miss Ellis. Tell us what you saw. Miss Gomez was going spaz at Rufus over his assignment, and he was ignoring it, so she pushed him. She deliberately pushed him out of his seat. That's what it looked like to me. Are you sure? Well, Emma saw it too. <laughs> Emily. That's right. Emily Larson. What did you see? She definitely grabbed his arm and pushed. Do you have any idea why Mrs. Gourmet should do such a thing? She picks on him all the time. Why? He's a bit of a loser. I think it's because he's Jewish. And she's... I see. All right. You two can go. Straight back to class and no dawdling, thank you. I won't have this sort of thing in my school, Constable. I'd like her to be treated as a police matter. But surely you want to get to well, You've heard side. the evidence. I imagine I can leave it with you. Uh, come on, take a seat. Look, I never even touched him. He just fell off his chair. You might have thought you were going to hit him. I know what that kid thinks. He's a weird unit. Sounds like you don't like him very much. No, it, look, he just irritates me. He's this wimpy, passive, cringing kid. You know, he's... Right enough if he just woke up to himself. Could this irritation have caused you to threaten him? I didn't threaten him. I didn't even touch him. Look, look, okay, look, I snatched for his paper mm. and I hadn't even gotten there and he just fell off his chair. Then why did he fall? I don't know. It, it looked like he threw himself off. Deliberately. Denise, are you aware that Rufus Sedgwick is Jewish? Is he? Might that have 
affected your attitude towards him? Well, uh, hang on. I've grown up as a wog in a skip's world, OK? I am the last person to discriminate against anyone for their religion. So what do you think happened? I don't know. He... I reached for his paper, mm -hmm. he threw himself off his chair and hurt his wrist. That's it. Hi, Rufus. You waiting for your parents, mate? For now, no. She's in with the doctor. Uh, how are you feeling? I broke my wrist. When your nana gets back, we'd like to ask you some questions about she what is. today. Uh, Mrs Sedgwick? Oh, hi, Mrs Goldman, actually. I'm his maternal grandmother. You're his legal guardian, are you? Rufus is having a little holiday with me while his mother settles into a new marriage. Oh, how long has he been with you? Oh, uh... Two years. 